Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. How are you today? How are you today? Good. All right, we're going to do an interactive welcome where we're going to welcome each other. So I need all my young people to stand, and I need all my younger people to stand. <laughs> so that's everyone. <laughs> All right, so you're gonna turn to your neighbor. Who is your neighbor? And we're gonna sing and we're gonna do the actions. I command my head to praise the Lord. I command my head to praise the Lord. I command my shoulders to praise the Lord. I command my shoulders to praise the Lord. I command my hands to praise the Lord. Do we have hands? To praise the Lord. I command my knees to praise the Lord. I command my knees to praise the Lord. I command my body to praise the Lord. All your body, clap hands, shake your heads. To praise the Lord. Welcome into God's house. And I pray that you enjoy this Global Youth Day. May you feel the youth within your body. Now that you have warmed up. And I pray you have a wonderful day. Happy Sabbath. Bow your head for prayer. Caesar, thank you to make dear father please you can help everybody to have a kind heart. A kind drink. Please, you can help the one that is sick and need help. So much help there. Please, you can help the one that, that couldn't make here today. Please, you can help everybody. Please, you can help the ones that are sick. Please, you can help the one that is on in danger. And you can help everybody that that is in in struggle, please you can help everybody. Please you can help everybody that have not have drink or they cannot and they are weak. Please you can help them to be strong in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You're in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's time for praise the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. This is. His house. Amen. Amen.
stand for our opening hymn, To God Be the Glory.
Happy Sabbath, church. This morning, local church project. The beach is one of my favorite places. My family love my family live closer, live close to the beach, and it is wonderful. It is a wonderful place to come, especially when the weather is warm. My husband and I have walked many, have taken many walks along the water and pray for God to guide the next step of our life. Looking at the water, we, we can all be remembered of God, sovereign, that is a big theological word. That simply means that God reigns above everything. God is in control. When, when the disciple in the book of Mark were caught in a storm, they cried out to Jesus for his help. God, Jesus was fast asleep, but they woke, they woke, they woke him up and, and he calmed the storm that troubles their life, that threatens their life. Their response was, they said to one another, who could this be that even the wind and the sea obeyed him? Mark 4, 4 41. Deacons, could you please come forward? Today we can rest, we can rest knowing that God is able to calm all of the storm in our life even deep even deeper than that god is able to give us sense of peace even when the world around us feel like it is it is in chaos we are blessed to be able to gather as believers and ensure each other each other with our testimony of how God has carried us through the storms of life. We, as we, returns our, as we return our tithes and offering today, let, let our hearts give, give from the place that gathers, that guides us through the storm. Let us bow our heads. Lord, thank you for today's offering. Bless those who have to give and those who don't have. In your son's name, amen. Happy Sabbath, Panama City Saints, and welcome, and welcome to our Global Youth Day service and to our online audience and to our congregation here welcome to the house of the lord amen panama city saints can we get an amen, amen. can we get a hallelujah? hallelujah can we get a glory be, to god? glory be to god you may be wondering why is it that everyone is wearing you know shirts and t-shirts and that kind of thing today is global youth day and i surrounded myself with some youth to see if some of that energy is transmitted and is able to make me even younger. Would you say amen? amen. <laughs> so if you see someone that is young around you, say happy Global Youth Day and also happy Sabbath. Uh, to our uh, people here, okay. Happy Sabbath, okay. <laughs> Thank you for coming. To our people here uh, in the sanctuary, if this is your first or second time, here in our midst, we would like to welcome you. Uh, in order for us to do that, would you please raise your hand? We would like to acknowledge your presence. You, don't, presence. you don't have to stand up or anything like that. But if you're coming for the first or second time, thank you so much for being here. May the Lord bless you. We have one person. Let's just acknowledge the presence of our visitors and friends here with us. I know there's more, but she was the, the bold one. 
So thank you for doing that and also people online following uh, with us. If you're a Facebook user, please hit the like button and also take your cell phone for just a moment, share the live stream broadcast. And if you are a YouTube user, subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Panama City SDA 1844. Panama City SDA 1844. And now we get to some announcements and Eddie is going to help me uh, with some of those right here. Today we have a downtown outreach and a meeting at church at 5 p.m. Then we have Vespers outside after the outreach at 6.15 p.m. The, the directions are in the, in the bulletins. Then we have our game night at the Fellowship Hall at 7.30 p.m. Okay, so what we're going to do in celebration of Global Youth Day, every single year we do some uh, evangelism, we do some outreach. And this year we have a very special opportunity. We're going to meet here at church at 5 p.m. At what time? 5 p.m. And please be on time because we only have 15 minutes, okay? In those 15 minutes you are going to be provided with a route, and uh, we will be given some of these flyers, as you can see, these flyers, for our upcoming evangelistic meeting next week downtown. So we're going to head downtown this afternoon. We will distribute some of these flyers. We also will distribute some of these literature uh, that has the address to our church and our phone number in there. And after we've done with that, we are going to meet at the spot in which the evangelistic meeting is going to take place. And that would be at 6.15. There, we will have Vespers. We will close out the Sabbath together. And then we come back here to our fellowship hall and our parking lot for a game night experience. How does that sound? Does that sound like something that we would like to participate? Absolutely. So I encourage you, wear your T-shirts from church it could be love is a verb, I am my brother's keepers, any of those, and come join us here at 5 and continue to uh, celebrate with us Global Youth Day. To conclude our announcements here, Eddie L. is going to share with us. Next Sabbath, we have our fellowship meal after service. The last week of March, we have downtown evangelistic meetings at 5 p.m. March 30th, we have communion service at 10.30 a.m. Okay, so please refer to your bulletins as we uh, invite you to each and every single one of these events. I'm going to ask Eddie and Eddie L to please come back here. We are going to take a moment to do something really special. I'm going to invite our um, uh, young adults and youth director, Marcus Jones, to please join me here in the pulpit. And another uh, tradition that we have every single year, uh, we acknowledge the hard work, the leadership, and the involvement of one or two of our young adults and youth in our church. Marcus was the recipient of one of these at some point, and now he's the, the youth director for our church. So I pray that whomever is going to receive it today may also be a prophetic word so that that individual or those individuals may also become even greater leaders for the, the ministry of Christ. Would you say amen? amen. So, Marcus, uh, I think we're ready to invite our first uh, recipient today, and that is someone that I, who, whom I truly appreciate. Her name is, you can read it, the first one right here. Abby Snyder. <laughs> Abby Snyder. Abby. <laughs> She's right there. Let her know. So, Abby Snyder. Uh, Abby has been a great blessing to our church. She always is available. She's always involved in so many areas. And she's a great example of what happens when you dedicate your life at an early age to the Lord. So, Abby, please come here to the front. Let's give it up for Abby, please. And you can, you can come here in the back. We also have another recipient, and it's a girl. It's a lady. Where is she at? I don't see her. This person? Is she in here too? Okay. Everyone is in there. This person, I cannot speak uh, more 
highly of her. Great heart, a very special young adult, someone that I can tell you, if she were not here in our midst, our church would be completely different, and that how special she is for us. I am referring to our sister in Christ, Christine Surgener. If you can come, please, and join us here. Miss Christine, yes. God bless you. God bless you. And uh, Marcus is going to read what the, the plaques say. So if you can go ahead and read it. So we would like to proudly present to Christine Surgener, Abby Seiner, the Youth of the Year Award, recognizing for y'all outstanding dedication and commitment and service to the Lord. We just want to thank y'all for everything y'all do for our church, and I'm glad to be a part of the family with you guys. a very intimate thing but when we pray together 
it's a very powerful thing. So join me this morning to pray for our youth and for every single person out there that thinks they're young enough to pray. So, dear Father, let's bow our heads. Dear Father, we come to you with a humble heart so that you can carry us in your arms and listen to our prayers. We gather together in your house to share your word, to praise you, and to learn how can we get closer to you. Dear Father, in this special day, we're celebrating Global Youth Day. We pray for all those young people Young people are hard too, that are making great things out there and help them accomplish their goals, align to your plans. Dear Father, we put you all of them in your hands. We know you have them. We pray for all of them so that you can clear their path. We also pray for all the adults and the people supporting the young ones. May they be able to see the good in every single one of them. Highlight the good things. And those young that need some support, make available an adult in their way so they can know you and learn how amazing of a father you are for all of us. In Jesus' name we pray today. Amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Our scripture reading this morning is found in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 9. If you have your Bible with you, you can read it with me. I am reading a new international version. It says, So Eli told Samuel, Go, and lie down and if he calls you say speak lord for your servant is listening so samuel went and lay down in his place amen ahora en español now in spanish encontramos la lectura bíblica esta mañana en el primer libro de samuel capítulo 3 versículo 9 y dice ve y acuéstate dijo elí Si alguien vuelve a llamarte, dile, habla, Señor, que tu siervo escucha. Así que Samuel fue y se acostó en su cama. May the reading of his words, uh, God bless. Thank you.
all stand and have a word of prayer, please? Let us pray. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, you are worthy to be praised. We give you the glory that only you deserve. Come into this place. Receive our adoration and speak to us this Sabbath morning. May your Holy Spirit move freely as we find a word of encouragement from your word. I pray these things in the mighty name of Jesus and all God's people say, Amen, amen and Amen. You may be seated. Just like I shared a moment ago, today is a very special day. It's Global Youth Day. And youth and young adults around the world celebrate this special day with hands-on activities in ministry and the opportunity for them to bless the lives of so many others who are in need. So I encourage you to keep our youth and young adults in your prayers today and I encourage you also to be an advocate for them to continue to grow in Jesus amen let's make sure that the PowerPoint is working okay so we're good okay you know in the mid 1950s Dr. Alfred Tomatis a Otolaryngologist with over 50 years of medical experience encounter a curious case that challenged conventional wisdom, right? A patient, specifically an opera singer, came into his office and he was disturbed. He was very upset. He was anxious. He was very discouraged because this renowned opera, opera singer had an experience Inexplicably lost the ability to hit certain notes within his vocal range. Think about that for just a moment. This person made a living doing what? Singing, right? He's done it probably since he was a little boy, right? He's became a professional. He's made money. He's become famous because of his uh, uh, vocal prowess, right? And here he is at the doctor's office. Because now he has forgotten how to hit certain notes. These notes were within his range. He's known how to hit these notes before. But something changed. Something was completely different. And now this opera singer found himself in this doctor's office. Despite multiple consultations with ear, nose, and throat specialists who diagnosed it as a vocal issue, guess what? Dr. Tomatis concluded otherwise. He said that when he was able to use a sonometer, he revealed that the sound produced by an opera singer was even louder inside the skull of the singer. Are you guys with me? I know that many of you uh, here who have a military background will appreciate the comparison. But according to Dr. Tomatis, the sound of an opera singer within his skull is louder than that of a military jet taking off while the source is just a few meters away from the jet itself. That is pretty, pretty loud. It was right there that Dr. Tomatis came to the conclusion that something needed to be done to allow people to hear better. Are you guys with me? If you've ever uh, seen a, hear aid, a hearing aid, or if you have a hearing aid as we speak, you should thank God first. And secondly, you should thank, uh, thank Dr. Tomatis. 
This is part of his discovery. It was his revelation. This sound within the skull of an opera singer was louder than 140 decibels. Imagine this jet uh, uh, taking off and you are right there. That's how loud it was. So Dr. Tomatis called this condition selective muteness. Selective what? Muteness, right? The opera singer became deaf because of his own voice. Are you guys with me? Isn't that interesting? He became deaf because of his what? His voice. And, you know, this incident sparked a groundbreaking medical concept well known within musical circles today. You know, whenever we are dealing with praising or choir or with a quartet, right? The first thing you want to make sure, even if you're a musician, is that you're able to sing what you are to play, right? Because according to Dr. Tomatis' discovery, the voice can only replicate what the ear perceives. Are you guys with me? If you cannot hear it, you cannot produce it. It's the resource of this research. So today we will dive in into a similar diagnosis, right? Not of a vocal impairment, but of spiritual tomatoes effect. Are you guys with me? The spiritual tomatoes effect. The truth is that many of us are dealing with relational issues, emotional struggles. Many of our spiritual shortcomings are caused by our hearing problem, our inability to hear. Are you guys with me? If your life is off key this Sabbath morning, if your life is in need of some direction and purpose, you may consider that perhaps you've become deafened by negative voices around you, particularly the negative voice inside your own skull. Are you guys with me? And maybe you are hearing this roaring sound inside of you that is making you lost or lose your ability to speak. So our journey to listening to God's voice must begin with a question this morning. Is God's voice the loudest in your life? Is God's voice what you hear the most inside your skull? If not, I will venture to say my thesis. I will venture to say that that is where the problem that you're facing today lies. The voices of criticism, the voices of condemnation have echoed so loudly that you've lost sight of your true identity. And maybe for weeks, maybe for months or even years, you've lost the ability to listen to God's gentle whisper. You've allowed other voices, including yourselves, to mute selectively the voice of God for your life. You see, we live in a culture where everyone would like to be heard. That's the whole point of social media, right? You go on Facebook, you write all, all sorts of things. You go to the internet, you have the ability to create content. Think about that. That was not the case 20 years ago. And that has been such a great success because it's providing people from all ages, different backgrounds, from all uh, uh, educational opportunities. People, uh, whether they are super wealthy or not, they have the opportunity to be heard. They have the opportunity to uh, speak. And that's why we do nowadays so little listening. We are not accustomed to listen anymore. I am very sure that you've been right there as myself where you're having a conversation with someone and you want to listen to the best of your ability but what you are really doing is thinking on what is it that you are going to say next yes or no 
We've come to the degree that we have paid professional listeners. That's what counselors do, right? In its majority, the majority and most time-consuming part of their work is to do what? Because we have forgotten how to listen. So this morning, we will encourage you to start by identifying first all competing voices that are preventing you from singing the song that God wants you to sing today. Would you say amen? You have voices in your head. You have voices all around you. People are talking to you. Media is talking to you. The news are talking to you. Politics is talking to you. Church is talking to you. The pastor is talking to you. Now let's hold on. Let's pause for just a second. And let's identify what's what and who is who that I am listening to. Would that be okay? Number one, let's identify. Then we will encourage you to silence all of those competing voices because the journey to listening to God's voice starts by having the right posture. If you want to listen to God, you need to have the right attitude. This was the case in 1 Samuel chapter 3 and verse 9. We find the right posture to listen to God's voice. Many of you may remember the story, right? After failing to identify God's voice for a long period of time or several times, Samuel comes to Eli the priest and asks him for some guidance. This is our scripture reading, right? So Samuel comes to Eli and Eli told Samuel saying, go and lie down. And if he calls you, say what? Speak, Lord, for your servant is what? Your servant is what? Listening. So Samuel went and lie down in his place. So this morning as we embark ourselves in this journey Let's identify all the voices that we're hearing. For, but in order for us to identify such a voice, we must have the right posture and say, Speak, Lord, for I, your servant, I am willing to listen to your voice this Sabbath morning. Amen? Amen. Isn't that a wonderful prayer to pray? Yeah. So I'm going to do something a little unorthodox within our service. I am going to pause for just a minute or two. And I'm going to let you do the talking silently and quietly. Just like the priest Eli came to Samuel and said, you know, tell God, speak Lord for your servant is listening. Talk to God for just a minute and say, God, open my spiritual ears and mute and silence the competing voices within my skull so that I can uh, listen to the unadulterated truth of your word this Sabbath morning. So I will let you one minute for you to pray, and then I'll close out and proceed with the message. Dear God, as we listen to the sound of silence in our sanctuary, may we be opened to hear your gentle whisper this Sabbath morning. It is in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, as I reflect upon the current state of our church and the current state of the world overall, a melody from God's word comes to mind. A timeless anthem that speaks to our hearts in the midst of uncertainty. Just as the opera singer looked for uh, Dr. Tomatis' help when he could no longer hit those notes, right? We too come before God. We must come before God seeking clarity and direction, right? But as we open our ears to hear his voice, we invite God to reveal the song he wants us to sing, right? We invite him to let us know the anthem for this Sabbath morning. Would you say amen? 
there's a song to be sung today. Amen? Amen. And such a song is different from you, Janet, from you, Shayla. It's a different song. It's a personal song. It's a wonderful song. It's a song of hope. It's a song of encouragement. It's a song of peace. It's a song of strength. It's a song of assurance for the future. It's the song that only experience can bring into your life. So as we pause and we hear the voice of God, we pray, Lord, teach me your song this Sabbath morning. Amen. You know, it's fascinating to consider that the Bible is filled with songs, right? We have praises, we have laments, we have doxologies, and we have a whole book filled with songs in the Bible. Do you remember what book that is? The book of Psalms. The book of Psalms was a, a recollection of different hymns and doxologies and laments for over a thousand years. The people of Israel, they wanted to record theological truths in these uh, songs, through these messages, right? And these songs were meant to be sung. Although we don't have the original tune today, we do have the depth and the wealth that we can find in its poetry and its scripture, okay? So what we're going to do today, I'm going to share a song with you from the Word of God, amen? amen? And this is a very wonderful song. You've heard it before. You maybe didn't know it was a song. But what I'm going to do is that we're going to, just like we would do with any other song, we're going to hear the song first, then we're going to study the song together, and then we're going to apply it to our own life. This song is entitled Psalm 46. Raise your hand if you've ever read Psalm 46 before. That's a great blessing, okay? So before we hear Psalm 46, I want you to pay attention up to the screen. This is the Hebrew original in which the Psalm 46 was written to the left-hand side, right? You have the heading first right here. And in that heading, if you go to your Bible, you will find certain uh, instructions for the musicians, for the singers, for the Levites, right? The mood, uh, how uh, festive or how uh, emotional it should be, how slow. You have several Hebrew terms to determine uh, what's the, 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 the right or the proper manner or posture for you to sing such a song. And then, like any other popular song, you have the first stanza. That, that's verse 1 through 3. That's the first stanza, okay? Then the second stanza, verses 4 through 7. And then the third stanza, verses 8 through 11, okay? How do you know that this is a song and where the stanzas are divided? You can see in your Bible a little word, I put it right here in red, that is, uh, uh, it's pronounced Selah, okay? Can you see that word? So how many Selahs do we have in Psalm 46? We have one, two, and three. So Selah is the Hebrew word for pause, making sure that the singer or he who is to interpret the song makes a pause makes a stops right so you have three of these to show you that there's three stanzas contained in psalm 46 which is just a regular song are you guys with me raise your hand if you're with, with me okay so let's talk about this song for just a moment i will encourage you not to read right now and i know that my english is broken but let's do one simple exercise now. Just listen. Close your eyes if you'd like. Just listen to the word of God through this song. Imagine its tune. And just pay attention to, God, to how God can uh, speak to your life this Sabbath morning. You don't need to read. I will not say this very often from this pulpit. Do not read the Bible. I will say, I will say it just today. Okay? So don't read it. Just listen to the word of God in solitude, in quietness, as we study this psalm together, Psalm 46. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear though the earth gives way, Though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, 
though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms stutter, the order, he utters his voice, the earth melts, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Amen. Can we say amen? amen. Can we say hallelujah? hallelujah? Can we say glory be, to God? glory be to God? Now let's take some time to study the song, okay? We're going to start with the first stanza, verses 1 through 3. And now I want you to just read it with me. We're going to read it together. You can either do from your Bibles or you can do it up from the screen. First answer, let's see what God has for us in quietness, in solitude. Let us allow God and his word to make its dwelling into our hearts and our minds. We're going to read together. One, two, and three. God is our refuge and strength. Therefore, therefore, we will not fear though the earth gives way. Though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its dwelling. O Panama City Saints, this opening stanza highlights the enduring nature of divine refuge. Yes or no? It starts saying, uh, our God or uh, God is our what? Our refuge and our strength. In other words, the protection of God is being uplifted right here. God is there to protect you. He's strong enough. You can find refuge in him. And because of such a protection, there's no need for us to fear. We don't need to fear. So God is able to come into our aid and protect us. When the sons of Korath wrote this song, their aim was to illuminate God's unwavering protection over his people. They wanted everyone in Israel to know that God is able to protect his children. Consider how relevant this message was for the children of Israel in the midst of the wilderness, in the midst of the past defeats that they have, in the midst of all sorts of uncertainty for the future. I mean, they didn't even know when the, the journey was going to end, yet they were able to say, God is my refuge. God is my strength. I will not fear for what the future holds. So the first stanza's point is that there's protection in the arms of our Father God. Would you say amen? amen? Although mountains crumble and the seas rage, we find solace and care in the shelter of his divine refuge. Because we are protected by God. Would you say amen? amen? Now let's read the second stanza. Verses 4 through 7. We're going to read it together at the count of three. One, two, and three. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. The holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Amen. 
You know, in the same way that the first stanza highlighted the protection of God, this second stanza is a statement of the presence of God. Are you guys with me? Protection in the first stanza, presence in the second stanza. Can we say all that together? One, two, and three. Protection and presence. One more time. Protection and presence. This second stanza is very interesting because it highlights the fact that there's access to the protection that was communicated in the first stanza. What's the point of having someone who is strong, who offers refuge, who is unmovable, yet you don't have access to such a protection? So stanza number two is saying, you guys have access. You guys have the opportunity to be blessed by what this uh, 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 God is offering you. You know, the imagery of a river is amazing here. Why do I say that? In biblical poetry, a river is a symbol of provision and refreshment. Would you say amen? A river is a symbol of what? Provision right? and refreshment, right? Remember Psalm 23, right? He makes me lie down in green pastures, right? And also Psalm 1 where he talks about, you know, it will be planted like a tree planted next to rivers, right? So this idea of rivers is scattered all over, uh, all over the, the, the biblical poetry. But what, what is uh, the, the, the most interesting thing about this river in Psalm 46 is because it is a part of a chiastic structure. A chiastic structure is just a fancy way to say a V-shape. Everybody say V-shape. Now let me, let me see your V-shape. Let me see it. Okay. Your V-shape. Okay. And this was just traditional Hebrew poetry to show parallelism between the first idea with the last idea. You see those two? And then uh, the second idea with the second idea or, or the uh, second to last idea, the third idea with this one over here. And in the middle, you will have the primary idea that the text is trying to communicate, right? Is the chiastic structure. But guess what? Psalm 46 verses 1 through 7, stanza 1 and stanza 2, those two are part of a chiastic structure. And guess what it is at the center of such a structure. Guess what is the primary message that the, the biblical author is trying to communicate. Well, here you have verse 1. God is our refuge and strength. Verse 7. The Lord Almighty is with us. You have power in both ideas. Does that make sense? So that's why we say that those two go together. In a very deep and a very uh, 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 complex Poetrical, is that a word? <laughs> in a very poetic way, right? Now, yes. In a very poetic way, the biblical author is trying to communicate this very important idea. So you have strength, you have almighty. You have, I will not fear, you have because God is with her and she will not fail. You have uh, verse 3, though it's water, roar, and form, and foam, you have the rest of the verse. And then verse 5, God is in the midst of her. And then at the heart of the chiastic structure, you have this river whose streams make people glad. Would you say amen? There's a river showing, revealing the provision that we are able to find in this powerful and strong God. Amen. There's a river for you to come and, 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 and be a part of the blessing that the river provides. So for someone who is in the middle of a wilderness, would you say amen? For someone who is going through the desert, for someone who is going through the difficulties of life and is very unaware of what the future holds, for someone wandering in this place for 40 years, knowing that God has a river of blessing is the greatest news that they would ever receive. So hopefully for you, today as you continue to go through the difficulties of life be assured rest assured that there is a river of blessing in the arms of our savior jesus christ amen, amen. there is a river whose streams make people glad amen. the river of forgiveness the river of salvation the river of god in other words in this river dwells the presence of God. 
and we have access to his protection. Are you guys with me? Stanza one, protection. Stanza two, presence. Stanza three, let us all read it together. At the count of three, you can see it up in the screen. In the screen. One, two, and three. Come, behold the works of the Lord. How he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. So in the first stanza, you have protection. In the second stanza, you have presence. In the third stanza, you have power. Everybody say power. power. In other words, due to that power, there's comfort in the divine refuge. Would you say amen? amen. There's comfort. In these last verses, the sons of Korath call on the people to witness the mighty deeds of the Lord, we are invited to observe how God puts end to the wars of this earth. And as a powerful God, He's whispering to you this Sabbath afternoon. Trust my protection. I am here. There is access. Be still and know that I am who? That I am God. You see, this is an encouragement to trust. This is an encouragement for us to be confident knowing that God is in control. Would you say amen? Cease from the toiling of this world. Rest assured that your life is hidden in the loving arms of Jesus. This is a call to quiet contemplation and to recognize God's supreme authority. So I close out this sermon today, Panama City Saints, by asking you a simple question. Have you heard the voice of God this Sabbath morning? Would you say amen? amen? Have you spoken to you personally? Have you been able to silence the distractions and the noise that you may find within your own skull? Are you able to hear the Lord speak to you today? I encourage you one last time that you may lay down for just a moment. And say like the prophet Samuel, with humility, speak Lord, for your servant is listening. So this morning through this message, through this song in Psalm 48, the appeal is very simple. I can tell you in the mighty name of Jesus that it doesn't matter who you are. Or where you come from, you can find protection in God. Would you say amen? amen? I can tell you, despite of who you are, that you have access to the protection and the presence of God. Would you say amen? amen? I can tell you in the mighty name of Jesus that you, despite your shortcomings and your difficult past, can find comfort Knowing that the Lord of hosts is with us. Amen? Amen. The God of Jacob is your fortress. Rest assured. Take heart. And know that God is with you. You know the reason why. This opera singer came to Dr. Tomatis was that. He could not sing any longer. You remember the story, right? He didn't know that he was deaf, right? 
He came because he was unable to produce a sound. He was not aware that the sound was not coming in. He only knew that the sound was coming out. If we apply that spiritually to our text this morning, guess what? Evaluate what kind of song, if any, you're singing today. If you are not singing the song of God, maybe and just maybe it could be because you are not listening. So I pray that today, this Sabbath morning, you may be encouraged knowing that God wants to protect you. You have access to his presence and you can enjoy his comfort. Now that you know the song, what is it that we are supposed to do? We have to what? I cannot hear you. We have to what? We have to sing it. We have to what? We have to sing that song and tell others and tell the world, Jesus Christ is coming. There's protection in God. I have access to his presence. There's a river of uh, provision. There's a river of salvation and forgiveness that I have access to. I can enjoy the comfort that comes from knowing that there's a God who is strong. There's a God who is for me and not against me. And I cannot keep it for myself. Now I have to go and sing that song so that others may hear it. Amen? Amen. This afternoon, you are provided with the great opportunity to go out and sing. And guess what? I'm going to tell you a secret. You don't need to be a great singer, Brother John. Okay? I'm not. You're not. 5 p.m. right here. Come. Let's go out into our downtown Let's distribute these flyers. Let's tell others there's peace in Christ. There's hope in Christ. Jesus Christ is coming soon. And as you sing the song, you'll see how any of the other uh, uh, competing voices will be put to death. And you will hear the amazing whisper of God telling to your heart, be still and know that I am God. Amen. Amen. Let us all stand and have a word of prayer. Let us pray. God, thank you so much for being our refuge and our strength. Thank you for allowing us to mute and re remove all the competing voices that may be sounding in our heads, in our skull. Lord, I pray that we are able to hear the perfect notes, the right tunes, the tunes of encouragement and hope and forgiveness and grace, the tune of restoration that we can find in such a river. Be our provider. Be our comforter. If anyone here who is distressed, anxious about the future, if, if there's anyone in this congregation that is lacking purpose, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you may get a hold of that individual. That you may be able to speak with a sovereign whisper. And let him or her know, be still and know that I am your God. That Jesus Christ died for us on the cross for the forgiveness of our sin. Amen. That we have access to the streams of water. Amen. That we can be washed Amen. and get white as snow Amen. through the baptism of your Holy Spirit. Amen. So I pray, Lord, that this Sabbath morning you may uplift us and provide us with a song that we are able to sing for the world to hear. Amen. Amen. We pray, not in our merits, but in the merits of our Lord Jesus Christ. And all God's people say, Amen, amen and Amen.
Remain standing for a closing hymn, Rescue the Perishing. Father, we truly again want to give you thanks. Thank you, dear God, for speaking to your manservant today, dear God. Help us, dear Father, that is, um, your words may not um, drop on stony ground. Help us, dear God, to live for you. Help us to listen and know your small, still voice that speaks to us. And when you speak through us, help us to go and tell others of your love and your soon coming. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Side by side we stand, waiting God's command, worshiping the saving Me by the 
Amen.